So with our rehabilitation of our spinal patient, we looked at some um, procedures that we could do on a flat couch or on a gym mat, and then we built that up to core work, and then we can increase that um, amount of movement that we're doing to try to develop muscle strength. But the other consideration in terms of low back pain is hypervigilance. And hypervigilance is where our patient is overly cautious about different movements. So there's a very fine balance that often an individual has experienced lumbar pain simply because they've been doing excessive bending. So in the early stages of rehabilitation, we want to try to reduce the amount of bending. But if we never change that, we will create that fear of movement that the patient feels that they should not bend even though they have no spinal pain, and that then becomes hypervigilant. So we're going to cross from early rehabilitation where we're trying to restrict the amount of bending to later rehabilitation where we're trying to encourage free controlled bending when the spinal muscles have developed sufficiently to support that. So early stage exercise we're going to use is our uh, hip hinge movement. So I'm just going to draw Annabelle round and if you just turn around, as she bends forward she can bend forward in two ways. Either we can lock the hips and just bend the spine, so if you just curl your spine forwards, so that is pure spinal movement, or just come back up again, she can lock the spine and just hinge from the hips, so that is now hip movement. Now early on what we're going to try to do is encourage more movement to occur at the hips and less movement to occur at the spine, so that we can modify the symptoms and then later on we will reverse that. So with the hip hinge we're taking a broom handle and we're placing this down the length of the spine. So it touches the head, the shoulders and the tailbone. Patient grips hold of the stick, top and bottom. Okay, so pop your feet a little bit wider and then all I want you to do is to bend your knees, bend your knees and tilt forwards and then come back up again and straighten your legs. Bend your knees as though you're sitting on a bar stool, tilt forwards and then come up. So I'm aiming for that lower hand to keep that stick tucked onto the tailbone. So really encouraging that movement at the hip. Okay, so we can then progress that onto a deadlift action where we're now using the movement that we have to try and strengthen the spine. So if you just move forwards a little, we're going to bring in a barbell and the deadlift movement typically is from the floor but we're going to start with a limited range deadlift. So we're coming into the bench and with a, a deadlift you, the, the lift traditionally starts from the mid foot. So we're just going to come down to touch the bench and go back up again. And we're using that hip hinge movement, trying to focus on developing the power from the legs. So if you just come round and feet go forwards, hip width apart. So just bend your knees onto the bar, wrap your thumb around the back, and then just straighten and lift. And again, bend. And a good teaching point is that we want her to try and clip her kneecaps. So keep that bar really in, so it just almost scrapes your kneecap. So you're about two inches in front of your kneecap, so draw it back. That's good. So down we go. Perfect. And then we come up again. And again down. And come up again. Good. So that's our traditional deadlift movement. But eventually... We can continue with that movement and we can, we can get her to do an Olympic deadlift and, and to, to produce uh, good levels of power through the hip extensor muscles and the spinal extensors. But what we also want to do is to address any fear of bending. And fear of bending is easily addressed by simply getting the patient to bend and to appreciate that it doesn't hurt. So what I'm going to do is to get her to, this time to keep her legs straight and to bend her spine. So if you just step up to the bench and all you're going to do is lock your legs out straight and curl down. So come right down 
right down, right down, touch the bench, and then come back up again. And just do three or four repetitions of that. So in Pilates, we call this a roll down. In yoga, it's just a bend, a forward bend. But we're trying to encourage that movement. Now really try and bend as much as you can from the spine. Bend, 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 bend. And come up again. All right. And then what we can do is progress that still further. So I want you to hold on to that dumbbell on the sides. I'm going to take the bench slightly forwards. And all I want you to do is to curl right down and you're going to put that dumbbell on the floor between your toes. So just curl down, bend, 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 all the way down, let it flop and then come up again and then bend down, pick the dumbbell up, bend the spine and come back up again. So this is our Jefferson curl and what it's doing is to try to encourage free bend of the spine and to use some of the, the power that we've got with our deadlift. Now obviously there is a balance between that point where you say where well, we're protecting the patient from bending to start with to modify symptoms. Once the pain is gone we then need to address back fitness and to increase the range of motion and to increase the strength and once they have that we're then moving on to a more functional movement and that is where our free bend and our roll down and our Jefferson curl become important.